Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is a beautiful Tuesday evening, and well, time to talk some lacrosse. You know, it's been an interesting year so far. Let's talk about the the college scene first. Uh, Notre Dame just started playing, you know, last week. Uh, Duke and Virginia have been playing. You know, basically everybody else has been playing except for like Notre Dame. The Ivies and a few other teams. So they just so those teams that I just mentioned. You know the Ivies, Notre Dame, and then a couple others. I think they just started last week. So like during the week of Valentine's Day, other teams. You know, they, they they've started a little bit earlier than that. Um, you know, there was one game I didn't mention earlier of um, that Denver Johns Hopkins game. You know, uh, like a couple weeks ago, thrilling game right there. Um, Denver came out with the victory in OT and everything like that. That was a real good win for the now um, Bill Tierney list. Denver um, Pioneers. Um, Syracuse, you know, not frauds at all. I get it with the whole goal mouth thing. You know, you can't willingly land in the goal mouth without somebody pushing you. And that resulted in a loss to Maryland in an absolute ruler of a game, by the way. Just a absolutely fantabulous game uh, that also went to overtime, <laughs> which is crazy. Um, again, it seems like it's going to be that top three is going to stay the same for quite some time. So Duke, Virginia, Notre Dame, that top three will stay the same. Uh, Nady is back. You know, he's been playing pretty, pretty good. You know, not you know, not completely perfect. He's been playing pretty, pretty good. Spalia and company for Syracuse. You do have to watch out for Syracuse. Again, whoever whoever is going to be that fifth team that won't get in the ACC tournament, they're going to be feeling it. They're going to be feeling real left out because they didn't get in. And then some other teams like Penn State with a head-scratching loss, you know, very head scratching. You see, Colgate has wound up in the top twenty, and which is very surprising to me. But yeah, the, the games really to watch. You know, the next couple of weeks. You know, I know. You know the whole thing with Georgetown. They're somehow in the rankings too at one and two. But again, uh, this Georgetown team isn't really as strong. You know, with the losses that they've had so far and everything like that. That really kind of you know. Messes things up, but yeah, uh, first couple weeks, really impressed with a lot of teams, and you know, this top three is the top three. You know, there's not really much movement there, but there will be eventually. So like um, Sunday, which I don't know why Notre Dame's putting these games on Sundays. I thought you know, a uh, Catholic school, you know, you would be playing games on Sundays, but then again, that's just a BYU thing. But yeah, they'll be playing on that Georgetown team, which is a you know, a very difficult team to really kind of gauge right now because they're one and two, and it's just so weird. Um there's a couple of NL games that are getting broadcast in the ESPAU, but again, uh, one of them involves the best one of the best teams in the NLL right now. Uh, but we'll talk about the NLL in a second. And then, you know, there's some Ivy League games that are going up against Ivy League teams going up against some ACC teams on like the first uh, Friday in March, so the first day of March, and then Johns Hopkins, Virginia in a couple weeks, Michigan, Delaware in a couple weeks. Do not sleep on Delaware. Definitely could win the CAA, in my personal opinion. Maryland, Notre Dame again. Maryland, Notre Dame have a you know just an absolute gauntlet of a schedule. Towson do not overlook Towson either. Uh, they'll be taking on Virginia in a couple weeks. That's just a couple weeks away. Again, another Michigan Notre Dame matchup that should be interesting. Even though Virginia beat the brakes off of Michigan, so I imagine the same thing will happen with Notre Dame Michigan. I imagine the same thing will happen, but Virginia Maryland that's gonna be fun. Shell and Berger taking on you know this Maryland team a very a very good Maryland team that, you know, struggled a little bit with Richmond, you know, so we'll see. We'll see. And yes, Richmond's right, too. I don't know why they're right, but they are. 
Um, and then uh, conference play will start up. You know, conference play is going to start up. You know, for some for some conferences a little bit early, some a little bit late. Uh, Big Ten going to start it up like a, like that lat like those last couple Saturdays in uh, March. But again, those non conference games that I just mentioned. Yeah, definitely take a gander at those. They're on the ESPN Family Networks or maybe Lacrosse TV if you get that. You know, that's free. It's not flow, it's not flow sports. So doing yourself a favor there for that. Yeah, the college cross scene, very intriguing. There's a lot of stuff that, you know, just cannot be understated. You know, uh, you have guys that really haven't been stepping up, stepping up. Oh, yeah, it's going to be a good time. You know, the Kavanaugh brothers are doing their thing for Notre Dame. Brendan O'Neill's doing his thing for Duke. Schellenberg, Cormier uh, from Virginia. Again, Nanny, Maryland. Denver's a really solid team. Syracuse is a pretty solid team. You know, not frauds. They're not frauds. They they proved me wrong. You know, they could have won that game against Maryland, but they proved me they proved to me that they're not a fraud. They can definitely do some damage in the ACC this year. We'll see how that goes, though. We'll see how that goes. Uh, and there's really nothing I can say about the Ivy teams yet because they've only played like one game. So there's nothing I can say about Cornell or Yale or Princeton or anybody in the Ivy League. Can't say anything about that. Um, so briefly, I want to talk about the PLL Championship Series again. Um, it is sixes. I know people are, you know, trying, you know, they're, they're still kind of eh on sixes. And I honestly just did not care. Uh, the PLL already kind of alienated me with the whole let's abandon, you know, the whole, you know, the nameless, you know, city nameless type thing. You go to cities and there's a Dallas team and everything like that. And, you know, my favorite team was the Water Dogs. Keyword being was now they're no longer because they moved to Philadelphia, quote unquote. Um, but yeah, the Boston Cannons won the PLL Championship Series. Again, this is like a consolation prize to the real thing. It does not matter at all uh, to me. It, it matters to the players, you know, I guess. But a lot of these guys are younger. Of course, it was Matt Cavanaugh getting the OT goal at the very end to, you know, sink the hearts of Philly fans on President's Day. But again, uh, uh, you know, you have guys like Dane Smith saying, nah, I'm going to go play for a man cup this summer instead. You know something's wrong. You you definitely know something is wrong there. And I know some other guys are definitely chopped at the bit to go play for a man cup with the um, NSL back at seven teams. So, you know, even though, you know, Six Nations, Peterborough are probably going to, you know, buy their way to the ship, but it's fine. It's fine. Um, NLL, you see the standings scrolling across your screen right now, and I said a couple weeks ago that Las Vegas and Saskatchewan are very disappointed, but Colorado, very surprising. I, I just don't I just don't get it, man. I really don't get it. Um, again, Toronto, Nick Rose, that whole crew, you know, Shriver's been out, other guys have been out for the Rock, but they just keep on pushing. Nick Rose is a wall, an absolute unit. Uh, New York, you know, the other team that played in the game in Montreal, the NLL Unboxed Series, which I forgot to mention a couple weeks ago. But, yeah, that was a really, really good thing. I looked at some highlights, looked at some pictures of, you know, the grass layout that they had put down. The fans were in the stands, and somebody is moving to Montreal next year, isn't it? And it's got to be my Panther City Lacrosse Club, isn't it? It's going to be them. It has to be. Um, I am indeed going to a Panther City game in a couple weeks. So in about in about two weeks, I will be going to a Panther City game. Um, there is an NLL game on ESPU that night. That's Toronto and Las Vegas. But again, Las Vegas is not very good. Very young team, Vancouver. I genuinely do not know why they're bad, but Colorado's probably the most frustrating 
team aside from Saskatchewan because Saskatchewan made all those moves and stuff in the offseason. So I don't know, man. And you see like a team like Buffalo that's, you know, five and four, but they're still sixth. So they will be taking on San Diego if the playoffs started today. But they don't start today. You know, Panther City's four and four, but they have no fans in these stands. I'm going to see that firsthand. I'm going to see firsthand, see how bad it really is. Because uh, it, it honestly, you know, for an NLT to be successful, you have to have at least 5K in the seats or something like that. So, somewhere around that number, that's what I'm feeling. And Panther City has not even reached that number in both seasons. Like, it's actually worse this year than it was last year, apparently. But it was it was bad last year. They just reported it, you know, probably even better than it was, to be completely honest with you. Um, again, for the Firewolves, that teamwork, you know, Kurtz uh, and others, I mean, just, just absolutely – Astonishing again, the Firewolves being seven and two and at the top of the NLL is absolutely astonishing. By way of standings, personally, the top team right now for me is the Toronto Rock, but you know, the, the Firewolves are giving them a good one two punch there. So, the NLL is continuing to heat up. Most teams have played like seven games, some have played eight, some have played nine, some have played ten, but. The race is heating up for an NLL Cup, you know. And again, there's a couple of games that are going to be on ESPN Networks over the next couple of weeks. Georgia, San Diego, that'll be this upcoming Friday again. Toronto, Las Vegas, uh, that'll be the Friday after that. And then before I make another update, I think that's actually the only other game. Right now, um, ESPN could add some more. Um, and of course, tune into TSN if you're in Canada. But for me, that's going to do it for me. Um, I'm trying to get something for Thursday. I'm trying to secure an interview for Thursday. I'm trying to secure somebody for Thursday. The Ozarks Lockers already told me, nah, uh, we haven't even we haven't even you know allowed you know anything to go down yet. We're still doing other stuff try to get players signed and stuff like that. So Ozark said no to me. Uh, I'm trying to see if I can get some guys from the Corpus Christi Titans, uh, Tritons on, but we'll see about that um, shortly. So if not Thursday, it'll be sometime this week. I'm either going to do the massive, massive update in arena indoor football either Saturday morning after the Elimination Chamber, which is at 4 a.m., or I'm gonna do it Sunday. It's either gonna, it's gonna be either or for that. So tune in, lock in, and congrats to number two fifty. Welcome to the family. You're here for the long haul with Big Boy Sports. So with that being said, everybody, hope you enjoy your lacrosse week because there's lacrosse games going on right now on the women's side, which I haven't really talked about at all and i don't feel like talking about it all because there really isn't much for me to say uh because i haven't looked into it i'm sorry i just haven't looked at any games i know there was that james madison game from like a couple weeks ago but again there's nothing for me to say about that that hasn't been said by others already because you know again i just don't support you know i, I shouldn't say i don't support Wilts cross i do i do support it but I kind of want, you know, the, I kind of want everybody to play under the same umbrella because we have too many different strands of lacrosse. I mean, there's sixes, there's box, there's field, and others probably. Well, the Olympic style, but I mean that's the Olympic style. There, there's just too much. There's just too much of uh, different styles of lacrosse, which you know I don't like sixes already, and yeah. I don't know. I, I, I'm probably going to sound, it's probably going to sound bad coming from me. You know, somebody might take that out of context. But again, uh, there's nothing really I can say about the women's game right now uh, because I haven't really watched any games. Yeah, I should probably say that. I haven't watched any games. But yeah, that'll do it for me. Um, Y'all take care. Have a good weekend. There are some, there's going to be some good lacrosse this weekend and throughout the rest of the week. Yeah. Bye, y'all. See y'all later on this week.